Lesson 23 of writing math, we're continuing to use different types of data displays. And in this lesson, we're going to look at bar graphs and picture graphs or picture graphs. And these are probably some of the most fun that you're going to be able to do because, of course, it's pictures. And then a lot of times bar graphs have lots of different colors to help us see the information. So in lesson 23, they start off with an example of a picture graph. Now, in this picture graph, again, just like we talked about before, it's important to have a title. So we're looking at favorite vegetables. I see here across the bottom that's labeled, we're looking at carrots, beans, broccoli, or corn. All right, and then there's a key, and the key is always really important. We're talking about a picture graph. It helps us understand what the data is showing us. So this key, they're using a smiley face as a picture, all right? And we could really use any type of picture as long as we have the key to help us understand it. So they're using a smiley face, and they show you that the smiley face represents one friend. So each smiley face is one person. So now that we know what our graph is showing us, we can actually, again, ask and answer some questions about the data. So I see here that there are four smiley faces that chose carrots as their favorite vegetable. So four friends like carrots as their favorite. Or over here, I see that three friends like broccoli. All right, so each one of these represents a person in this example. So if I ask you how many people we talk to all together, I would need to add up all of the smiley faces. So I've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So we talked to a total of 11 friends. Now that again is a picture graph because they use pictures, here they use smiley faces, to help us understand the data. Here's another example, but this one is called a bar graph because instead of using pictures, they use what we call bars to show the information, all right? So this one might look a little different than the last one because the bars don't have numbers on them. We have to use this piece over here on the side, which is our scale. So you see these little lines, it's kind of like a vertical number line. So instead of our number line running left to right, it's kind of going up and down over here on the side. And it tells us that this is showing us the number of friends. Again, this is the same information we just looked at with the picture graph, all right? But they used a bar graph to show it instead. So the same thing, I know that there are four friends who chose carrots as their favorite vegetable. I know that there are two that chose corn, three that chose broccoli, and two that chose beans. So you look at the way the bars are, how tall they are, and you use those lines to look over here and see the number of friends. So again, broccoli had three friends who chose that as their favorite vegetable. So let's look at an example from the book. This was one of their problems. It said Martin asked the students in his class, what is your favorite sport? His results are in the tally chart. So he went around and asked all of his classmates and he put little tallies for their favorite sports. So the question was, how many students did he ask? And then down here, we see the data shown in both of our examples we're looking at in this lesson. So we have a picture graph. Again, it tells us each star is one student. Over here, we have our bar graph with the same information. And then it tells us that using that kind of vertical number line or that scale on the left-hand side tells us the number of students who picked that. So... For some of you, it might be easier to quickly see how many students like soccer because you can see it's right there at seven. Over here, it's the same thing, but we'd actually have to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So some of you might like this one better because you can quickly see that four people chose baseball, three people chose tennis, and six people chose football. So there's not really much counting that has to happen since we have it labeled over here on the left. Here, we actually, again, would have to count all of those up. So the question from the book asks us, how many people did he talk to? How many people did he ask? Well, again, I could start here with my seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I can see that we asked 20 students. I could add up those numbers over here. 7 and 4 is 11, plus 3 more is 14, and 14 plus 6 gives me 20. All right, so that is an example for both bar graphs and picture graphs using that data. You could show it either way. Some of them look a little bit nicer than others. And again, some of them makes it a little bit easier to read information quicker. Whereas over here, we knew where it was. We didn't have to actually count anything. But both ways.